probably the most famous and popular French fry in the world. But these I made right here in the kitchen. Come with me, we're gonna make these prior to 1990 style. So why cook these at home? They're McDonald's fries. Most of us can go down the street and buy them at the drive through window. Well, I'll tell you why. A lot of people who are around a while ago mentioned that McDonald's fries tasted better when they were younger, the people, not the fries, and they just tasted better. Well, there was a cutoff point where the flavor arguably changed, and that was 1990. Up until 1990, McDonald's fried their fries in beef fat. Oh, ho, ho. beef fat like this inside this container here. Don't be worried about frying in beef fat. Way back in the 90s when McDonald's changed to vegetable oils, there was a big movement against beef fat because people assumed it was not good for us. Modern day thinking is changing that perception in that beef fat is not that bad. It's less processed than many vegetable fats. So I'm not worried about it. Do your own research. You can get this beef fat tallow, as it's called sometimes, online if you can't find it locally. So I have a bunch of these I did earlier. What we're looking for is that McDonald's size. These are just soaking in some water while I show you how we cut this type of fry from the next potato. Little word of advice, when you're keeping potatoes in water and you don't want them to get that orange oxidization or gray color that they get sometimes, just add a little white vinegar to the water and that will protect them from oxidizing which is a really good thing so we'll get rid of these and let's use the remaining potato to show you one thing when you're making fries that have to be uniformed in as close as possible to the exact same shape as the other ones you're going to sacrifice some of this potato don't worry about it save it in a little water and vinegar and you can fry those up for breakfast potatoes and put them in lots of recipes i actually like doing these fries because it always leaves me breakfast potatoes for the next day what we're looking for here is to make this into a uniform shape so you have a round shape to the potato and just try to go to where you see a natural line and cut off that outside bit that is bubbling out from the natural line of the potato. Now you can see that this is much more regular. I don't worry about the ends because McDonald's fries seem to have that kind of beveled end and that's just fine. Now what we want to do is go about a McDonald's fry width in, which is about an eighth of an inch and just cut down and try to dislodge that from my knife. It gets stuck because it's watery there and the knife gets stuck. But this is what we're looking for, this flat shape, because we're going to cut the fries from here in just a second. Here's another one. And this potato has been sitting in the water for a few minutes here while I was getting ready. As you can see, it hasn't really discolored, but it will. So we need to get it into this other bowl of water here as quickly as we can. Now we'll just go about the same width down all the way down this potato and lo and behold you'll have some pretty mcdonald's ish fries if you think you've gone over or under a little bit it's easy to just trim them don't worry you're going to keep all of the extra potato for something else so i'm going to get rid of the end of that one now it looks like a mcdonald's fry and we'll just go along this entire potato and add it to the rest We're now going to soak them in, let's call it sweet water, for about 30 minutes. We're going to add some sugar to that water and some corn syrup to that water. Doesn't really impart that much of a sweet flavor, but what it does is it blocks the fat from entering the potato and making the interior fatty, oily, 
So here we are, the water boiled, and I let it cool for about 10 minutes or so, so it's hot, but not boiling. I've drained these McDonald's cut fries. They look pretty good to me. Before we put them in that water, we're going to add about a cup of sugar. And I guess this is about seven or eight cups of water. Plenty of sugar is going in, and then our corn syrup also. A good squeeze of corn syrup. And then, because it's warm water, it will dissolve nicely. Give it a good stir. Make sure that the sugar is dissolved before we put the french fries in. That's all dissolved nicely. It's sweet water now, and we'll just drop our fries in. Give them a little stir and leave them for 30 minutes and we'll see you right back here. These have soaked nicely in the warm sugar water. I'm going to drain them in a colander in the sink and then lay them out here so they can cool. So they've just softened very slightly, not too much, and they're just about perfect as they should look at this stage. We'll spread them out nicely here on some paper towel so that it can drain some of the moisture off and we'll also drain off or blot off the top. We want these to be as moisture free as possible, as dry as they can be and we're going to put them in the fridge until they're cool to the touch. You can put them in the freezer if you have room but you just want to bring them down to very cool before we go ahead and fry them for the first time of two fries that we're gonna do. This is how beef fat looks when it's rendering down, when it's warming up and becoming this beautiful golden frying substance that makes all the difference in McDonald's fries. And in fact, if you're going to just fry regular fries or any fried food, check it out, see how comfortable you are using beef fat, do the research, Okay, these came out of the fridge that oils to temperature. I want to cook one portion of McDonald's fries, so I kept this container from last time I enjoyed them. So I'm going to just see how many it's going to take to fill this thing. This is the large size container. Let's put these in here. And I think this is probably about right. I'll drop these in, give them plenty of space. We don't want to crowd them and then we'll just let them begin the frying process in lower temperature oil now until they are just softened slightly. They've just been in here a few minutes, they're softened, they've risen to the top. That's a good sign that they're ready to pull out from this par fry, the first fry before we finish them. So we're just gonna put them on a nice sheet of paper towel to drain some of this oil off. And see how much of a portion it is when you get a large fry from McDonald's. It's quite a lot. Now we wanna just dab some of this oil off. Not a big deal, but dab some off. And you know what? They'll go back in the fridge uh, just for a little bit to cool them down. Now McDonald's at this stage, par fried, will freeze them, flash freeze them, and then ship them to the McDonald's locations. They can take a frozen potato and put it in. It's not a bad idea. I don't want to spend all that time tonight freezing these. I'm just going to let them cool and then finish them off. The oil will need to come up about another 20, 30, 35 degrees in temperature, and it needs to really sizzle when they go in. It takes them about five to seven minutes. You want to get them just that McDonald's crispy crunchy exterior and then we'll be ready to taste these and see how well we did okay so uh, yet another step they've cooled down a little bit in the fridge not they're not frozen you can of course like i said freeze them and we're just going to now carefully drop these into the hotter oil to finish them off and crisp them up and then we'll be ready to go with our McDonald's fries. Take a look, you can see the difference in how vigorous the bubbles are. This is hot oil now, necessary to crisp these fries. 
Look at these. They're ready. They've been about five or six minutes. They're starting to brown around the edges just like the real thing. They are the real thing, they're potatoes. And then I think they're just about the right color. I think this is what I see when I get my drive through McDonald's fries. So I'm gonna pull these out and then we're gonna salt them. McDonald's puts a lot of salt in their fries and it's table salt. They don't use any fancy salt. Table salt is very granular, very small and will cling to these fries really well. So I'm gonna use table salt on these just to be traditional. And remember, these are the pre-1990 McDonald's fries. You gotta try them. So we're just gonna put them on some paper here to drain them. We don't want them too oily and we should have one portion, one large portion of McDonald's fries. Now the important thing is to salt right away when they come out from frying. Lots of salt. This is kind of a little shaker here so I'm gonna have to shake this quite a lot to get enough salt on these fries. Got my container. Just drop some fries in here. I know in McDonald's they have that handy scoop, but I don't have one. Next time I'm in, I'm in next time an m, m next time I'm in McDonald's, I'll hop over the counter, steal one, and run out real fast so I can do the same thing as they do in my kitchen. Okay, the taste test, very important. Looks good, smells good. And by Jove, it tastes good. I really do think there's a difference in frying in the beef fat versus the vegetable oil. I really do. These take me back to when I first tasted these McDonald's fries. Try them at home. It's, it's a little bit of work, but it's well worth it. You are always welcome in the kitchen. Please subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell, and make sure to come back and see us next time.